Uh, my name is Bob Miller and I'm representing Santa Barbara Coastal LCR. And um, uh, the theme of our research that fits well within the theme of uh, this year's Science Council meeting is ecological consequences of fishing. And I'm gonna be talking a little bit about work that is led by Hunter Lenahan on the project and um, Katrina Malikoff also participated as a graduate student. But first, a little site news. First of all, we recently, a few weeks ago, completed our midterm review in October. So that was um, a relief to finish that, but it was actually pretty enjoyable in the end. Um, we recently initiated a, long, a new long-term experiment to examine competition between sessile invertebrates and macroalgae and giant kelp's role in mediating that relationship. Uh, giant kelp shades the bottom and tends to uh, out sh uh, or, um, shade out understory algae, which then allows sessile invertebrates apparently to um, dominate space. And we also began a research collaboration network funded by um, the NSF Coastlines and People Program called the Regional Ecosystem Services Observation Network, or RESON, how to increase long-term data collection, focused on how to increase long-term data collection to better understand and manage coastal marine habitats in Southern and Central California. And um, we're hoping that this brings the project uh, closer to a number of long-term efforts occurring throughout Southern California. Next slide. Oh, that picture shows one of the new experimental plots, piece of sandstone that's bolted to the bottom as uh, experimental, an experimental plot. One of the big questions um, in this theme is really, or really the overarching question is what are direct and indirect effects of fishing on kelp forest ecosystems? And a lot of this is focused on trophic cascades. And the idea being that humans fish, largely fish predators, um, and, re and re uh, releasing um, the, those predators' prey, which are oftentimes herbivores like these sea urchins in the picture here, allows them to overpopulate and to mow down primary producers, specifically in our system, giant kelp, creating what are called urchin barrens. And so the idea is that uh, eliminating fishing through the establishment of marine protected areas, for example, could... Um, enhance the predation effect on grazing and indirectly benefit giant kelp. If you could click again on this slide, the wrinkle in our system is that we actually fish the lower, the lower part of the food chain as well, specifically red sea urchins, which are a really high value uh, fishery target in California. Um, in 2012, a network of marine reserves was established and three of them are in our um, long-term study sites. And so we have a great opportunity to look at questions like this at our LTR site. And we've looked at it a little bit in the past and more recently, um, specifically with this question, trophic cascades, are they important in our system? And uh, the wrinkle here is that we have two species of sea urchin, one fished on the left, the red sea urchin, which contains really high value gonads, the one on the right is the purple urchin, which is very common as well, but is totally unfished. Starting with this slide again, um, <laughs> one, of the, over, one of the questions in, under this overarching question of what the effects of fishing on uh, ecosystems is, is about trophic cascades and whether they are important now and in the future. <clears throat> Back in 2012, before the establishment of the marine reserves at the LTR site, Carla Gunther and Hunter Lenahan led a comparative analysis of those sites that showed that the majority of our sites showed no evidence of the cascade. In other words, there were many lobsters, many urchins and abundant kelp at a number of the sites. And there wasn't any correlational evidence of, of uh, a relationship between those two things. More recently, Katrina Malikoff led a study looking at Using a longer term data set from reserves established in 2004, she used a park service data set from Channel Islands National Park to show that after the establishment of these reserves, she used a before and after um, comparison analysis. The unfished purple urchins showed no response to protection from fishing, while heavily fished red urchins actually increased substantially. And so, and there was no change in kelp. And so the marine reserves, the, the human, uh, fishing pressure seems to be a lot more powerful than the indirect effect of predators on urchins. And 
the upshot of all that was that we have now clear direct ecological effects of fishing on predators and grazers, but so far, little evidence of indirect effects on giant kelp. Next slides. <laughs> but as the SBC reserves age, we plan to look at the effects of fishing on the entire food web, not just sea urchins. And the, the, there are, we do see huge increases in the numbers of predators in these reserves. And so they must be having some ecological effect. And we, th we hope that the, um, more detailed data that we collect in the LTR uh, should show some of these effects. The new long-term experiment has been established at seven sites, including three reserves, enabling us to examine the effects of fishing on both kelp and species interactions. And finally, we plan to strengthen our collaboration with local fisheries to continue to document the social and economic effects of MPAs on fishers. The picture shows one of our former graduate students, Matt Kay, working with uh, lo local lobstermen, fishermen. Thank you.